Hey everyone, Ollie here. So iOS 16 is now finally available. Well, it should be available by the time I upload this video. And it's available, it looks like, on any iPhone that's an iPhone 8 or newer. You should be able to update to it for free. Can we just take a moment and commend Apple for still providing updates to devices that are five years old? Five years old, an iPhone 8 came out five years ago and they're still providing the latest iOS, which is just pretty nuts, I think you know there is no android manufacturer doing the same so yeah when you buy an iphone you do get software updates for quite a few years which is really nice to see to update your own phone or see if you've got a software update you go to settings general software update and you should see it come up there so what is probably the biggest update and the first one you see when you update the device is the new lock screen so yeah we do finally have a sort of customizable lock screen so here we can see the clock at the top and we can see some widgets. You can now finally add some damn widgets to your lock screen. <laughs> I'm not sure why this wasn't done sooner. Notifications are now accessed from the bottom. Obviously I don't have any notifications right now. Usually they were sort of in the middle of the screen. Now you have to swipe from the bottom to get notifications, which I think is actually quite nice because it makes it easier to see them rather than sort of having to reach up towards the phone. And notifications are also stacked as well, but you can have a list view if you like, if you prefer the older design. One thing I wish Apple did offer though with this new lock screen is the ability to change the flashlight and the camera. It would have been really nice to just be able to have my own apps, be able to customize these to maybe quick launch my own camera app that I prefer or another app that I prefer. When it comes to actually customizing it, you hold down and you're instantly given a few options when it comes to customizing your lock screen. So I have various different lock screens here with different wallpapers. And what makes this interesting is that you can have different lock screens with different wallpapers and different widgets, and then you can tie them to different focus modes. So maybe you have a lock screen for home where you have a picture of your family, maybe your loved one or something, and you have widgets which are also just more related, well, more sort of separated from work. And then you have another lock screen for work. Maybe you have your calendar, uh, maybe you have a more sort of professional lock screen, you could say, and yeah, have widgets related to work. Bunch of stuff you can do. You can tie it to different focus modes, which I think is really nice because focus modes, I've seen a lot of people use them, have different setups for different focus modes. And yeah, it's just nice to see that you can tie a lock screen to them as well now. If we look at some of these lock screens that I have set up, so yeah, just using some of the Apple wallpapers, um, you have that one there. We also have this one, which I think is really nice. So this one can actually animate when you unlock the phone, which is pretty cool, I think. That's a really nice wallpaper that's included with the phone. If we go back to customizing it. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in this wallpaper, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. It's one of my own. I really like this one because this one actually shows you where you are with the green dot on the globe, which I think is awesome. And when you swipe up to unlock, the globe sort of just comes down. And I think it looks pretty nice. If we have a look at some others. So yeah, we have the one that I've made with my wallpaper, the globe one, the pride one another one with Apple's wallpapers. So if we go to add a new lock screen, we can just swipe over, add a new lock screen. And yeah, there's some options here for adding your own photos and wallpapers that they've already included. Um, they've also added the classic clownfish one, which is pretty awesome. And you, as you can see, there's a depth effect as well, where the clock is behind some parts of the wallpaper, which is really nice. I really like this one too. And it just goes back to that classic Apple aesthetic that they used to have years ago with the first iPhone, I think it is. Yeah, really nice, cool wallpaper. Um, but I'm gonna stick with the one I've currently got, which is this one. And then if we go to customize, we can start customizing it. So we can change things like the date bar at the top. You can add whatever you like instead. So maybe I want to add the weather, like so I can have the, the date and the weather. And then if we go to change the clock, you can have different fonts for the clock, different colors as well, if that's what you're into. Um, I'm not really into that, so I'm gonna just keep it like that. Then we can go into adding widgets and right now the widgets are quite limited mainly because it's sort of limited to the stock apps that you have on your iPhone as more apps get updated we should see more widgets added on as well and then one little feature that I really like is that once you've added your wallpaper you press done it will show you your home screen option and what you can do is you can go to customize home screen like so and you can then blur the wallpaper if you like which I think is really nice because I think it makes it look much nicer when you have a sharp wallpaper as your lock screen and then you swipe up and you get a blurry one automatically. Just makes it easier to re see the icons, read the text. And then the final addition to the lock screen is the live activities. So maybe you have live scores for a football game or maybe an Uber trip or something. It will show in the bottom of the screen. Obviously, I can't really demonstrate on this camera, so I'll just put an overlay so you guys can see it. 
but that's really nice because then you're not getting notifications constantly about updates and stuff you can just have a sort of live widget at the bottom which is pretty nice so yeah that's the lock screen a big update there and probably the biggest update of ios 16. Um, it's something that we've seen on android for a long time though i'm not gonna lie i feel like it's taken a while to get to ios but i'm just glad it's here and it's a welcome change. I also wanted to quickly thank Masterworks for sponsoring this video. If you're someone who has invested in stocks and shares such as the S&P 500, you may have seen returns not as well as you've expected over the last year. An alternative asset class to consider is high-end artwork, which is where Masterworks comes in. Masterworks is a platform that makes it easier to invest in contemporary blue chip art. You can essentially buy and sell fractional shares in artwork from the likes of Picasso, Monet and many others. This type of high-end artwork is usually only accessible by the ultra-rich. Masterworks has sold five paintings since 2017, returning an average net of 26.8% to investors. In fact, contemporary artwork has outperformed the S&P 500 by 164% over the past 26 years. It's a great hedge against inflation and it's one of the highest performing alternative assets according to JP Morgan. There's currently a wait list, but if you use my code, you can skip it and you can start investing today. So make sure to check it out. Next up, we have some important changes to messages. So now you can unsend and edit messages, which is amazing, just great. Send a message something like, uh, let's do, hey, what's up? We can send it. So obviously I've sent it to myself here, but what I can do is I can now hold down on the message, I can edit it, and I can be like, hey, what's up, Olia? There we go, done. And that, and that edits the message. It does show that it's edited though, so whoever you sent it to will see that it's edited, but they, I don't think they can see what it was before. And then if you wanna unsend it, you hold down, and you can do undo send, and it will delete the message. Now, this only applies to messages within the first 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, you won't be able to edit them and you won't be able to unsend them. This also only applies to other people who have iOS 16. So be careful. <laughs> you know, you might be seeing it unsend or edited on yours because you've updated to, to the latest version, iOS 16. But if someone is on iOS 15 or, or, or previous version of iOS, yeah, they're still going to see your message and they're still not going to see an edited version. So yeah, be careful with this one. I do want to give you fair warning. Next up, we have this pretty cool feature where you can lift a subject from an image and then copy and paste it elsewhere. So I have a picture of my car here. I can hold down on it and automatically select it. Then I can go back to the home screen, go to notes maybe, and then paste it right into there. How awesome is that? Like super quick and easy as well. It's not absolutely perfect though, with images that have a lot more sort of, I guess, separation from the background, they're going to be easier to cut out. But it does a pretty good job, and that's a really good and easy way just to cut the background out of an image. Next up, we have haptic feedback for the keyboard. Now, this is impossible for me to show on camera because you can only feel it. You go to sound and haptics, you go to keyboard feedback, and you can now enable haptic feedback. So when you're typing something like, hey, what's up? everyone oh you're here <laughs> like something like that you can feel the vibration monitor the tactic engine tapping away as you tap the buttons on the keyboard really really nice and i feel like it's actually very useful for those maybe who just want some sort of physical indication that they've tapped a key on the keyboard it's almost like having your own little sort of mechanical keyboard in your iPhone. So yeah, very nice to see. I know this will be a feature that a lot of people have been looking forward to. A small update, which I probably should have mentioned earlier with the lock screen, is that now you have an album art which takes up the whole lock screen when you listen to music. And you also obviously have the music control player, whatever, at the bottom as well. Really nice to see because it also changes the whole sort of lock screen background to be a blurred version of the album art. I personally really like this one, mainly because I listen to a lot of music. And just, I just feel like it adds to the experience. It's just a nice thing to have. Now here is one which I think a lot of people will love. Finally, we can add the battery percentage back to the battery. Wow, why, why was it even taken away in the first place? I don't know, but we can go to settings. We can go to battery, battery percentage, and we now get, I'll zoom in a little bit. We now get a battery percentage on the phone. I don't know why it ever went away, but it's nice to see it back. And finally, you can see your battery percentage without having to go into control center or swipe anything. It's always there. Next up, you can now pin tabs in Safari. So when you have a tab open like this one or this one, you can just hold down and you can pin the tab. So now 
it will never get deleted. It will always show up at the top. So excuse this weird setup I've got going on right now, but it's the best way I can show you this new feature, which does also require macOS Ventura on your Mac, but you can now use your iPhone as a webcam. So you don't need to have a professional camera or anything. You can use the back camera on your iPhone as a webcam, which is obviously going to be so much better than the webcam that's included with the MacBook. So you can see here, it comes up with an option, use your iPhone as webcam. So right now we have it using the webcam in the MacBook. That's why you can see the overhead camera. Basically you can see yourself. <laughs> and then if we go to video and we choose iPhone camera, uh, there we are. I'm using, I mean, this is such a bizarre setup, but I'm using the the webcam oh well my iphone has a webcam and obviously it probably makes a lot of sense to mount this somewhere maybe on a tripod or something but it works like the quality is pretty darn good it's actually really good and i can even actually point it anywhere else so i could maybe point out the camera i can see myself on the screen over there i can point out the camera that i have here point out the camera up top oh like so but yeah this is really awesome this is a feature which i wish we had ages ago like i feel like it just makes a lot of sense to use your iphone as a webcam considering how good the cameras are on iphones already so yeah no need to buy an expensive webcam anymore you can just use your iphone and that is it those are some of my new favorite features on ios 16. there are of course a ton of other features but i wanted to highlight some of my personal favorites yeah if you guys know of any features or know of anything interesting of ios 16 please leave it in the comments below i'm always looking to find out and see more sort of tips and tricks and get the most out of iOS 16, get the most out of my iPhone. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.